Hello everybody, Manic Mercurian here, and today we have another birth chart reading. I've actually been getting a lot of requests for these, and so I'm still I'm still doing them for free or for donation, um, just for now. But I am there. There is a higher demand for these now, um, and I only have so much time. So so if you do want a reading, definitely um, just ask, leave a comment, or email me at manic.mercurian at gmail .com. Um, because if the demand continues to increase, I will start charging for these. But as of now, they are free slash for donation. I do enjoy doing them for sure. Um, but this birth chart reading is for May 27th, 1995 at 9 o'clock p.m. in Alexandria, Egypt. And I think it's so cool that there's another one, another um, reading for somewhere that's so far away from where I am. I want to get a map and put like pins in it of all the places um, that people were born of the charts that I've read. But anyway, so without further ado, let's get into this reading here. So this person, the first thing I noticed is that this person's chart is very different than the last few readings I did. I was noticing a lot of similarities, which is really kind of fascinating. There's almost synchronicities in the people that were asking for readings. Um, and then this, the whole orientation of this just seems so different than the last few readings. So that, you know, it's interesting to see those similarities, but it's also interesting to see a different chart as well. Um, it's all kind of interesting in different ways, I suppose. But, um, but yeah, this is kind of a different chart. This person has Gemini Sun, Taurus Moon, and Sagittarius Rising. And their planets are all kind of just scattered throughout the chart. They're not really clustered to one side. However, all the inner planets, except for Mars... Are pretty much clustered in the fifth and sixth houses in this area here um you know sun mercury and venus which and that's pretty normal mercury and venus are always close relatively close to the sun but the moon is also close as well um, moon is in taurus sun is in gemini so okay so let's just talk about sun and gemini moon and taurus just to start so we're mixing air with earth so um air and earth are the more logical elements they're not as emotional so this person might be kind of intellectual kind of cool calm and collected not someone who gets really emotionally worked up very easily especially with moon and taurus moon is exalted in taurus because it's so grounded there it's so stable and firm in what it believes and you know moon is exalted in taurus because not only is it receptive and giving and empathetic, you know, um, it adheres to the needs of others and anticipates the needs of others, but it also knows itself well, it knows its own boundaries. And so, you know, it has that self empathy as well, um, where it knows its beliefs, it knows what it feels very, in a very strong, firm, you know, confident way. It has that inner confidence that's really refreshing. So, so yeah, that is a strong placement. And I do like that the sun is in Gemini because uh, moon and Taurus is a great placement, but it's, you know, it's, it's very consistent. And so Sun and Gemini adds a little bit of openness and flexibility, um, a need for variety to some extent. So there, there are two very different energies that are combining here. Sun and Gemini, Moon and Taurus, are, they're just, they're very different. Um, you will need stability probably most of all with your moon, your whole core is in Taurus. And so you... You, you are emotionally stable and you want that stability as well. You don't particularly like, you know, drama, that kind of thing. But you do want to open your world up to some extent. Gemini, Gemini placements are very curious. You know, you would fit that, um, the, some of the traits of Gemini in the sense of, you know, wanting to know a lot about many different subjects or, you know, being open to um, different or weird concepts, just learning lots of information. And, a lot of it can be very like scholarly or academic, but it doesn't have to be. Gemini isn't very selective about what it learns. That's why it learns about so many different things. So, you know, Gemini can be kind of a gossip or it can just be interested in other people because there's just so much information there. So, so, um, so I would say that this is a person who is intelligent in the sort of traditional sense of the word. Um, this person is a quick learner because Okay, so you having Moon and Taurus, it makes you grounded and you only believe what you can s kind of sense or perceive. Like, you know, you don't want to get carried away and just lost in some like fantasy that doesn't even make sense. You know, you want things to make sense. You have that practicality to you. Um, but then you also have that Geminian openness with Mercury and Sun and Gemini. And 
that ability to imagine a little bit, to have that um, vivid imagination and to learn about more abstract concepts. So combining that openness and the imagination and ability to understand abstract concepts from Gemini and also the desire for information, the curiosity, combining that with the practicality and groundedness of Taurus is very intelligent, I would say. You could be a good learner. You could, I don't know, be somewhat intellectual to some extent. Sagittarius rising can be intellectual as well. Um, Sagittarius, you know, is the only sign that's ruled by a, a creature that is half human, half, um, you know, non-human animal. Uh, and so, you know, Sagittarius does have that intellectual side as well. It's also animalistic, but it's also intellectual. So especially combining with Gemini and Taurus, I just see, I see you as being someone who, you know, would be interested in abstract concepts. So it makes sense that you're interested in astrology. Um, uh, one pattern that I'm noticing is that you have a lot of planets that are in domicile, um, specifically the inner planets. So you have moon exalted, which we talked about, and then Venus is in domicile and Taurus as well. So you have moon and venus and taurus which is is so nice because they are so strong they're in a very clear open way and then you have mercury and domicile and gemini as well um and mercury in gemini that would just make you that much more intelligent you're able to you're able to process a lot of stimuli a lot of information and you're very interested in other people especially because mercury is conjunct the descendant and so, I don't know, you're very empathetic and you're very, you're very able to understand other people of all walks of life. And you may be attracted to people who have Mercurian qualities. So you may be attracted to people who are, you know, intelligent or intellectual, analytical, people who might have like a slim build um, or might be like kind of darker complected, um, you know, kind of tan. Um, what else? You, you you are attracted to people that have a high degree of versatility to them or complexity people that are multifaceted because you you're able you're able of you know taking all that stimuli and of someone that's very complex or you know you or information that's very complex so that's something that I think you want with the things that you learn about or that you're interested in your pastimes but also in the people that you meet you you know, you, you are a Gemini after all. You, you want to talk to people who, you know, have interesting conversations. Like, you, you probably are not a big fan of small talk at all. You want uh, an interesting conversation. Sorry, I had to turn off my water cooler. I always forget about that. Um, okay, but then, yeah, so having Moon Exalted, Venus in Domicile, and Mercury in Domicile, it would make you um you know easy to understand and relate to and especially having sun and gemini with moon and taurus um you know gemini is ruled by mercury taurus is ruled by venus and so you're combining that sort of intellectual energy of gemini the talkative energy that the good conversationalist energy of gemini you're combining that with the sort of soft and sensual taurus and so these signs in particular combined together makes someone it makes a dynamic that's extremely conducive toward having good pleasant conversation so i don't know i think i feel like you could almost be a glutton for like really interesting conversations or um, you know dialogues um let's see yeah you're definitely an intellectual i'd say for sure um okay what else here so and i've already kind of talked about relationships a little bit so let's just kind of do that part now here so you do have venus and taurus and then you have mars in virgo so there's a clear um pattern there that both of your you know venus and mars these romantic and sexual planets are both in earth signs and then also you know with being an earth moon yourself you would have a clear attraction to earth signs and then your descendant is in gemini and so you'd also be attracted to air signs or maybe gemini in particular and that would work really well i think relationships would actually be somewhat easy for you um it would be easy for you to have peace in relationships because what you need and what you're attracted to in a relationship is not complicated. Um, you are earthy and airy and you need someone who is also earthy and airy. And so that dynamic would be very easy. You, you know, like it's not always that easy for other people. Sometimes what they're attracted to might be very different than what they actually need in a relationship. Um, for you, it's pretty much straightforward. You want someone who is um, grounded and stable like you are who is somewhat intellectual um, you know kind of airy meaning that they are um, 
someone a little bit detached like you don't i don't think you would want someone overly emotional or you know gushing with emotion i think that would be a turnoff to you you want someone more just like cool calm easy going more rational um you know maybe someone intellectual like yourself i would say um i would say that you have a really good work ethic mars and virgo usually has a very good work ethic and it's very prominent at the top of your chart it's very visible um let's see and then the taurus also generally Taurus placements would mean that you have a good work ethic and then something i wanted to expand on more before so you do have these multiple inner planets in domicile or exalted like the moon um so that would make you easy to understand and you know likable kind of popular um, but then you do have sun in the sixth house and mercury in the sixth house as well and then you also have mercury retrograde so um the sixth house is not always easily understood ancients would say the sixth house is the area of problems problematic situations conflict and so you it would make you very humble um six house placements are very humble they're kind of quirky or different they they have their they're independent thinkers so they have their own way of looking at things and their own opinions excuse me you would definitely think for yourself not only with the six house placements but also the the um, with gemini and the taurus together Again, I really see you as an intellectual. You, you're someone who really thinks about things. You're a thinker. And, you know, you, you come to your own conclusions, you know, and so you don't so much care what everyone else is thinking. You have to process things yourself. And you have that capability. Like, I feel like you have the capability to process a lot mentally. Um, and so, yeah, I think you do kind of come up with your own perceptions on things, your own opinions. You get, you know, lost in your own subjects that you find interesting personally. Um, let's see here. But yeah, yeah, there's almost that mix of like, you know, you being very appealing and very easy to understand, but then you also have some in the sixth house, which is more misunderstood, more, very humble. Um, but I think that's kind of a nice blend because they sort of balance each other out because having, you know, so many inner planets in domicile or exalted can have the potential of making someone, you know, kind of full of themselves. But with you, I really don't think that's the case because you have sun in sixth house Gemini. I would say you're a very modest person. Uh, Taurus is also a somewhat humble placement as well with the moon and Venus there. So, so yeah, I don't know. I see you as being kind of intellectual and humble, um, easy to understand. Um, but then you do have Mercury retrograde as well, which is funny because Mercury is currently retrograde in an air sign and you have Mercury retrograde in an air sign in your natal chart. And so right now at this current time in October of 2021, um, you may actually be a little bit more expressive or, you know, you'd almost have the opposite effect of Mercury retrograde that other people might feel because, you know, you have this in your own natal chart. And this is unusual. Most people don't have this. I believe it's 13% of the time that Mercury is retrograde. I could be wrong. It might be 12, something like that. Um, so you are in the minority. You're kind of a weirdo. <laughs> and I don't mean that in a bad way, but people born with Mercury retrograde think differently. Um, and it's, it's very intuitive. You you i don't know and it's hard for me to describe because i don't have this in my own chart but what i've observed is that mercury retrograde people can almost like see the future somehow not literally but um it's almost like they can look at like if you're mechanical you can look at a machine or um if you're not mechanical you can like start watching a movie and it's almost like people with mercury retrograde they can like take all the parts and like deconstruct something and they can see how the, all the parts are moving in a machine or with, in a movie, they already know exactly what's going to happen way later. They can already, it's almost like they're looking at things backward. Like they can already see what's going to happen based on what has been happening. I'm not sure how to, how to say that, but they're, it generally makes you intuitive and it also makes you that much more of an independent thinker. Uh, Mercury retrograde people usually think for themselves. They have a unique perspective on things. And, um, and it also makes you more able to, kind of going to these slower states of mind where you can access that intuition um but i also see you as thinking very quickly with mercury and gemini and and sun and gemini um again you're so capable of handling a lot of information like a lot of stimuli very quickly um but at the same time you can also i think slow down and i think i i feel like you could focus very well with gemini with uh, mercury retrograde and gemini um and you definitely want to learn uh, with Sagittarius rising, your, your one of your main life missions here is just to learn. 
learn by having physical experiences in the world by you know having adventures or you know and a lot of that could be theoretical and cerebral and you know intellectual about like learning things um but a lot of it could also be about traveling or you know doing real things um you know talking to different kinds of people who of different walks of life or going to different places around the world um you know it's you know, Sagittarius wants to do anything that will expand its soul pretty much um, expand the heart and the mind and the soul so so soul growth is pretty much what you you've come here to do just to expand and to to um you know to learn from having experiences and so having Sagittarius rising can it can it can indicate that you have a very interesting life story because you're meant to just have experiences. So, you know, with, with the Jupiter ruled ascendant, your life is very much about the journey and not the destination. And so, you know, it's, it's almost like you can do no wrong. Even if you have, you know, a quote unquote bad experience, there's value in that. You can learn from that. And that's true for everyone, but it's especially true for you with um, Sagittarius rising. You also have Jupiter um, retrograde in 12th house Sagittarius. Um, so that's interesting. So your, your chart ruler is Jupiter and Jupiter is also in domicile. So it's also a final dispositor as well. Um, so you, I don't know, you, you very much are here to learn. I mean, I can already see that with your Gemini and Taurus placements, but, and, you know, having Mercury on the descendant and then also having Jupiter in such a strong influential place in your chart. You're so much here to learn. Um, let me see where your South node is. Your south node is at five degrees of Taurus in the fifth house. Okay. So, but you're coming very much from the Taurus energy. So that's interesting because Taurus and Sagittarius are so different. I think, so you're coming from a place where you are, um, you're more accustomed to just being stable and, um, you know, just having continuity. Um, just continuing things the same way. But there's very much a large part of you that needs soul growth. You need things to be different and challenging. Um, I mean, you may, I think maybe part of you wants things to be the same all the time and wants that consistency, but it's almost like you will deteriorate if you experience that for too long. It may be comfortable, but it will lead to your downfall because you you need a challenge i feel like you crave a challenge you're so able to understand so much like so much or even just experience so much so much complexity so i think i don't know it's so important for you to have those experiences where you're growing and learning you know with uh not only with sagittarius rising and jupiter in sagittarius but also the gemini placements and you have saturn in pisces as well so you're very much here to grow and expand and learn um let's see and with Saturn and Pisces, you may have trouble relaxing, especially at a young age. You may have trouble sleeping. Um, Saturn and Pisces can often indicate insomnia or um, problems with like dreams or sleeping, um, sleep disorders. Um, let's see what else here. Or just having trouble relaxing in general or being able to access those kind of intuitive um, parts of your mind or to be more spiritual that type of thing but but having Saturn there it means that you have challenges there early in, in life but once you kind of grow and mature and spend more time here and and work through these challenges you can be extra strong there later in life and you you know wherever we have Saturn in our chart that's where you can actually be a leader once you work through those kind of karmic lessons in that area and so I don't know I think it's so similar to your like I'm seeing this pattern all over your chart that I see you as someone being maybe kind of rigid or consistent at an early age, which is funny because you're a Gemini, so that might be a little bit unusual. But um, I mean, and it's kind of nuanced because there's part of you that is always open and flexible, but deep down, it's like you have this um, com uh, what's like this uh, dysfunctional relationship with consistency. Like you want it, but it's not good for you. And I think as you mature, you will become more open and more able, more more desiring of that complexity that you can, I think it makes you more alive that you're so able to handle the complexity, whether you're, you know, learning about an abstract concept or 
you're physically, you know, in some faraway place or something, you know, that type of thing, like, you know, those things that can really expand your mind and your soul. I think that's what you will become more open to later in life and become better at. And again, I don't know exactly what that's going to be, but um, it, the, the bottom line is soul growth which of course we're all here to do that but especially you um you know Sagittarius it almost wants to get out of its comfort zone that the comfort zone is out of its comfort zone if that makes sense so you know learning about different customs or um, you know complex ideals um that's kind of what you're here for and I do see you as having maybe trouble maybe having trouble being more spiritual or being more open to like emotions for instance um, emo like all these kind of watery concepts because you do have North Node in Scorpio and Saturn in Pisces and you actually have you, your chart is very well-rounded elementally actually let me think about that actually I'm sorry that's not it's really correct you only have Jupiter in fire Sagittarius and then Saturn and Pluto in, in water um, so you are mostly earthy and airy so okay so yeah so you might start out life more um, a little bit more stubborn and more just not not as emotional and more focused on kind of just like facts or um, like they say you would be left right 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 brained I think the more logical like mechanical side of your brain would be like more active at a young age but I think as you mature and grow you'll be more open to experiencing you know these deeper emotions and also with with the emotion comes the intuition as well and so you can also experience that kind of depth that comes with the emotion and, and intuition and, and spirituality, these types of concepts. And I think it's almost it's almost like, you know, if you start out young, just wanting to learn and starting out with things that are um, more obvious to your physical, obvious to your physical senses, because that's what Taurus wants. That's where you're starting out from. You can start there and just start learning about things, you know, that um, appeal to your pragmatism but once you start learning and branching out especially with the gemini and the sagittarius you'll start learning and branching out and you'll eventually get into concepts or experiences that are more spiritual in nature and that's where that's what will unlock that those deeper emotions for you that you will kind of grow into um, a little bit later in life especially after age 30. i hope that makes sense okay and then let me see how much I don't know how much time it's been anyway, but, um, and then I'm also noticing, so you have a lot of, you have a lot of planets either right at the end of a sign or at the very beginning, um, not the inner planet so much, but you do have Mars at zero degrees Virgo, you have Pluto at 29 degrees Scorpio, and then Uranus at zero degrees Aquarius. So let's see, and these are all sort of, I wouldn't call Uranus a malefic necessarily, but these are all very disruptive planets. <laughs> And so, I don't know, there's something karmic there. Um, Mars and Pluto are making an out-of-sign square between 0 degrees Virgo and 29 degrees Scorpio. Um, there is a potential there for violent accidents to happen when that aspect gets triggered. I don't think, it's not something that would apply to your entire life, that your entire life would be accident-prone or violent. Um, but there is a potential for multiple times in your life you know, when, if, if things line up at, you know, um, right around, right around the Leo Virgo cusp or the Scorpio Sagittarius cusp, or just opposite those areas in the Aquarius Pisces cusp or the Taurus Gemini cusp, um, if planets, if certain planetary configurations line up in those areas, you could have a violent, um, accident or, um, I hate to be, I don't want to, be too negative or to create a self-fulfilling prophecy but i do think that potential is there though um so that's something to look out for i suppose but um let me see here um but yeah otherwise having planets just at the very end or the beginning of signs it, there's a certain intensity at the very beginning and the end of signs and so um there is i don't know an, an intensity there i think again to touch on that mars and virgo again i think you're i don't know that that you do have a lot of energy like you can be very productive and whatever you're working at whatever your job is you're a good worker you want to be working you want to be productive you always want to be doing something especially with that gemini energy you know you have a lot of like nervous energy and so i think you're more comfortable when you're always doing something and again that's that polarity between 
the Taurus side of you where your moon is and your south node is where you want to just be calm and just chill. And of course, you do need that to some extent. We all do. But there's also a side of you that wants to be very busy and very active and, you know, handling more um, complexity or more action. And, and uh, you know, of course, take time to rest. We all need that. And you do, of course, as well. But um, I don't know. I think, again, I'm, I think as you mature and, you know, uh, develop and evolve, I think you're going to become more busy and to embrace that kind of busy side of your personality um, that energetic side, because you always want to be productive. You want to be doing something or working on something or figuring something out. Um, and that's a good thing. It's all about balance, of course, you know, uh, not to be too extreme in either direction, but, but yeah, Mars in ninth house Virgo, it's so prominent and you really don't have, when, when you were born, you really didn't have any planets in the sky. I mean, there was Jupiter and Pluto that had just risen um, just above the eastern horizon. But other than that, it's really just Mars that was high in the sky. So, um, and being at zero degrees Virgo, I see you being very productive. <laughs> Mars and Virgo can also be a little bit, um, a little bit particular, um, you know, and it would, it would make you upset or it would drain your mental health to have a cluttered home. And that would apply to everyone, but this is particularly you know of the utmost importance for you like you very much want things to be organized and it would kind of, it would just irritate you if they're not here organized um and you want your house to be clean and stuff so so i would see you as being hygienic and hardworking. um you have mars and virgo there it, it's just such a powerful thing i think because um virgo you know makes us want to do all these little tasks and having Mars there, that's where your ambition is. You're extra ambitious and energetic toward all these little tasks and the mundane things in life. And I think there's actually great power in that because, you know, if you start out with all these small tasks and just the mundane aspects of life, you can, you can accomplish great things, you know, by just breaking things down and, and just, um, you know, energetically achieving all these small goals or you know ambitions of yours so so that's kind of your style and i think it works well um let's see and then you're also you know you are taurus moon so you are very stable and you have that endurance about you as well so i don't know i just feel like you're meant to work on a lot of things in life or have a lot of varying experiences i think your life would have very many different phases like it's almost like you have multiple lifetimes in this lifetime like you may have multiple completely different careers or, you know, completely different places that you might live for a long time. Um, and then everything might dramatically change. And again, that might apply to everyone to some extent, but this is especially true for you. Um, you, yeah, you might, you might live dramatically different lives in this single life, if that makes sense. And then talking a little bit about your career. So you do have Midheaven in Libra. So that would be, indicate to me that you want to be to service to others um, and you might want a career where you're working in a partnership of some sort um, so that you know that could be a lot of things but something where you're working one-on-one -on -one with people maybe with like clients or something where you could have like a business partner um, something about partnerships or um, I don't know working with Ah, that could be so many things really, but you know, something about working one-on-one -on -one with people, um, individually with clients or maybe one-on-one -on -one with a business partner and something where you can be of service to others. Um, and again, that could be a lot of things, but I don't, I don't know exactly here. Um, let's see. And then you do have IC and Aries, which would indicate to me that you may have been a very fiery child, like a precocious child. You may have not wanted to listen to your parents. Um, you may have been kind of stubborn and, you know, just, um, uh, what's the word you may have just been, you know, so energetic and fiery that you just wanted to do whatever you wanted to do. You didn't want to listen to anyone else, didn't care what anyone else thought, but this would definitely, you know, become more mild as you just got a little bit older. Um, even by your teen years, I would say that you'd kind of be more mellow as the icy kind of fades away. Um, okay. Let's see what else. And then you do have Saturn direct. Yes. Okay. So I don't know. I would say that like I, about your parents, I would say that your parents are both very different people 
um, they would both expect different things from you, which could be confusing at a young age, but it would make you multifaceted um, because you, your parents would both be, I think they'd both be, oh, it's hard to say, they would just be very much individuals that were very different from each other, if that makes sense. Um, let's see what else here. Okay. Yeah, that's most of what I see here. Um, North Node and Scorpio. So also South Node and Taurus, you're very independent. Um, it might be hard for you to, to, um, to have intimate relationships because you just don't really depend on other people. And there's different pros and cons to that. So, I mean, it's good that you're um, independent and that you're sufficient, that you can take care of yourself. But, you know, it might be a little bit more challenging for you to have that like dependency on other people. You might not so much trust other people very well in an intimate context. Uh, it might take a lot for someone to earn that trust from you because, because I do see you as being very self-sufficient. You know, um, you're not particularly emotional you have South Node and Taurus, so you're just kind of used to taking care of yourself, I think. Um, but again, I think that changes as you get older and become more open to some of these deeper intuition, emotion, etc. Um, you that would also result in you being more open to being more intimate or dependent um, in relationships, for example, uh, not just romantic, but you know, friendships or family as well. Um, let's see. Oh, oh, also not only that intimacy and dependency, but you know, that dependency also has to do with like sharing things. So like, you know, Scorpio has to do with, um, sharing, I don't know, sharing like a home with someone or sharing like finances with someone. Um, I just, I think that would be sort of very foreign to you at a young age and not something that you embrace very readily, but as you mature, then it's something that you would, um, kind of gravitate toward and understand more have an appreciation for um let's see what else here oh also with north node and scorpio i think and this kind of ties into what i've been saying but i keep seeing this in multiple parts of your chart but at a young age you'd be more interested in the more like practical subjects to study like you know the the more like mainstream areas of study but i think as you mature and get older and expand more you'd be more interested in those um of obscure or complex or you know weird or misunderstood areas so and that applies again not only to um, fields of study but also like physical experiences where you might learn things of I don't know you might go to a place a place in the world that is looked down on or that no one wants to go to and you, you might see a different side to things or you might explore topics that uh, people don't know about or people misunderstand or um, maybe occult information, like astrology, for instance. Um, you know, as you kind of mature and get older, especially starting after age 18, um, let's see, 18, and then 27 is another time where you'd get a boost of this. Um, especially after 18, though. 18 would be big for you because your nodes would be activated and you do have Moon and Venus in the same sign as your south node. 18, around 18, 19 years old would be very difficult for you because but you would become extremely, you know, much, much more self-aware um, and, you know, right at that time. And then you would become more open to those weird or abstract or complex or occult, um, you know, information or experiences, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much what I see in your chart. So as a whole, let's just kind of sum it up here. So. I see you as being someone cool, calm and collected, detached, logical, um, a quick thinker, good learner, good conversationalist. And the, the main the main takeaway that I have is you're someone who starts out very pragmatic and you, you 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 will always be pragmatic. You always have that about yourself. But you start out with someone you start out in life as someone who is kind of no nonsense, uh, maybe a little bit slightly even more traditional, like let's just learn the you know commonly accepted way of things but as you mature you're going to become so much more open to the world and so much more open to these really really deep you know uh, experiences and subjects and i don't know i just 
I like it. I think it, it, it seems like a good journey. I think you're going to have a lot of different um, good stories and information and friends that you pick up along the way. Like having Sagittarius rising your whole life is like this big journey or this big adventure. It's like there's something, you know, theatrical about it. So, um, so yeah, and then I don't know, you're just so equipped for learning and having experiences in general. So um, anyway, so I like your chart, but hopefully that resonated for you. Um, I would so much appreciate it if you just, you know, message me and let me know, you know, what resonated for you or what didn't. I would love to hear it. And again, if anyone else wants a reading, just leave me a comment on one of my videos or you can email me at manic.mercurian at gmail.com. I just need your birth, date, time and place to do a reading. And I can accept payment through PayPal or uh, Facebook Messenger at this time as well if you'd like to donate. Uh, but at any rate, thanks for watching and thank you for requesting this and I'll see you later.